Welcome, AP. 19.3. You get me on camera. Hello. Uh, we're going to talk about movement, degrees of freedom. Okay. So molecular motion and energies, the entropy of a system indicates its disorder. So we know between solids, liquids, and gases, we have the most degrees of freedom. When we're talking about freedom, we're talking about movement. So we have the most disorder, aka particle movement. And over here, we have the least particle movement. Now, I don't want to say the word none because there is movement in solids. They vibrate in between the structure. So like Mr. Water Molecule here, if this was solid water, there's still vibrational motion. Kind of think of it like a slinky going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There is movement there in the bonds, but not like going like this or something, some crazy gas or liquid type of motion. And in, in any process that increases the number of gas molecules leads to an increase in entropy. Now you just saw this in a learning objective from the video right before. When you have a reaction, it's very important that you pay attention when it's entropy, those states of matters. So anything, say like you have a gas and a gas that produces another gas, you have to keep an eye on, watch the moles. Watch the moles of the gaseous ions. So somebody like this, where I have two moles, A and B, I have two moles on my reactant side, but over here, I only have one mole. I have not increased the uh, entropy of the reaction. I've actually decreased the entropy of the reaction. I went from two moles having disorder down to one mole having disorder. So I still got gases, I still got movement, but I have led to a decrease in movement because I have less gaseous moles. So any reaction that increases the number of gaseous molecules leads to an increase in entropy. So same thing right here. What if I had like nitrogen monoxide reacting with O2 and I get this two NO2 gas. Well, right here I have two moles plus one mole of gas. And then I have just two moles of gas. Well, I went from three to two. I have decreased my movement. And if I decrease my movement, I have decreased my entropy. Be very careful when you like have uh, liquids and solids thrown into this. So like if I would have had maybe like four uh, A's that were solid and maybe one B that was a liquid and I produced two moles, oops, sorry, two um, letter C's, but they're gases. And I know you're looking at the reactant side and you're like, okay, four plus one is five, but I have solid liquid produced a gas. I have more movement. I have two moles of gaseous movement versus no gaseous movement on this side. I have definitely increased my disorder so in this case, my entropy has increased. So anytime you're able to increase the number of gaseous moles uh, in a reaction, you increase entropy. So the first thing is, ladies and gentlemen, find the gaseous moles, okay? Which side has the most? So which side has the most? And obviously if your products have more, so reactants versus products, if your products have more gaseous moles, you have increased entropy. You should probably be putting like a capital S instead. Or if your reactants are uh, increasing gaseous moles for your reactants, then in that case, your entropy would be decreasing. What if you only have solids and liquids? Okay. So if, let's even go in this route. What if I had like two moles of solid and maybe uh, one uh, mole of liquid, and then I produced two moles of liquid. Okay, I don't know why I keep writing the word moles. So two of letter C, and he's a liquid. I have no gases. So now I go to the next state of matter. Now I go to which one has most movements. I gotta look at liquids now. If I have no gases, then now I gotta go to step number two, look at the liquids. I have one mole of 
of liquid over here. Sorry, I got like all these emails coming in. I have one mole of liquid coming in and I produced two moles of liquid. So one mole versus two moles, I have created disorder because I have more movement on this side than on the reactant side. So I have created a disorder. So in this reaction, I have increased my entropy. So ladies and gentlemen, look at it however you want, but you first have to look at gaseous moles. And if you don't have any gaseous moles, then you gotta go to liquids, okay? But when you're looking at gaseous moles, which side has the most gaseous moles? So step number one, look at the gaseous moles. And then number two, uh, which side has more gas versus gas or maybe liquid versus gas or liquid versus liquid okay any of those scenarios you can look at but the name of the game is we want the most gaseous moles on whichever side how can we relate change and entropy to changes molecular level all right this fancy phrase degrees of freedom is like our way in chemistry of saying motion of movement the greater the movement aka degrees of freedom the greater the entropy so the more you can get my mr water the more i can get him to move the more disorder i'm creating now there's three type of motions a molecule can actually have okay so individual molecules have degrees of freedoms associated with those motions so there are three types. You can have translational, vibrational, or rotational. And this is the reason why I'm on camera today, okay? So with translational, translational has to do with moving that one molecule into a different location in that container, okay? So translating means that the molecule is moving from one location to the other. Gases obviously have the most motion. So the more this molecule can move from side to side and up to down and left to right, the more it's moving, the more translational motion it has, okay? Vibrational, any state of matter can do this, okay? So with translational, ladies and gentlemen, gases have the most. Obviously, liquids would be the second, and solids, unless your salt is moving on the table from one location to the next, uh, no, there's no translational in the solids, okay? So gases have the most, second place is liquids, and we are not even looking at the solids on this one, okay, because that salt ain't moving. Vibrational moment, all states of matters can do this, and we're looking at, and I put this picture in there from the book because I always like this picture, vibrational can happen here in between the bonds, and it can happen obviously here, okay. It can happen from up this way to this way. Just go up and down and up and down each side. And you can even bring these two hydrogens. You can even bring them closer. Okay, there's vibration going on there too. So in this picture right here, okay, these three movements right here, this would be like your vibrational moment. So every state of matter can do this. Obviously, gases can do the most of it because they're moving more. Solids can still do it because the particles in solids, they are moving. They're just only vibrating. So same thing, gases would still have the most vibrational motion. I just don't want you to think solids are just sitting there looking pretty. Okay, They do move, but only in their bonds. Okay, They're not moving from one location to the other rotational i always like to tell students uh, back in the day if you ever played with them like a top okay well like a like kind of like a spinning uh jack if you ever played jacks when you were um uh, pickup jacks if you played them like when you're a kid and what happens is think of it like this if this molecule is kind of like cut in half like on an axis and it rotates so side to side to side to side just like this gases can do this liquids can do this solids uh, they can't do that okay so you have to think of it like this picture right here i'll put little stars on that one and this one we'll put this star would look like this so you would have to show ap in like a picture type of form what type of movement would it have so it's like thinking like you have like an imaginary axis kind of like splitting down the middle of it 
and you would just draw this little spinny little sign on it to show that it's rotating on that axis. Well, I always get students to say, well, what if it's like even atoms? Because right here, you have three atoms. Well, what if it's like two or four or six? Can't this guy still rotate? Where's the axis? Well, the axis would then be right in the middle of the bond. So it just rotate like this, back and forth, back and forth, just like this. Gases can do this. They can rotate all the way. I feel like I'm doing some crazy dance. And then liquids, well, liquids flow, but they can still rotate as they flow. Gases, uh, they're just vibrating. They're vibrating, but they're also going in and out, in and out, and vibrating, and vibrating, going in and out, in and out. So you need to look at, you need to always think, and you know you think Rodriguez sounds crazy when she says this, but you got to think like a molecule. you got to think like if you were a molecule, what type of movement would you have? Could you have any of these three? Because you got to have at least one of them. And the more movement you have, the more entropy. Okay, that's always the name of the game. The more movement, the more entropy. So if you have a gas, a gas can actually do all three of these. A liquid, liquid can do all three. Solid, there's only one he can do, and it's vibrational. So we like to call it a fancy word of if you were going to take a picture of a point in time, if you froze time and took a picture, we call it a microstate. And what a microstate is, it's like a snapshot. If you could take like a snapshot of a picture at any point in time and look at the speed, position, the energy at that given time, what would that microstate kind of look like? So you take a picture, snap, take a picture, snap, take a picture, snap. Every time you take a picture, does the movement change? And I hope so if it's a gas, okay? I apologize, all these CSF emails coming in. Right here, every time you take a picture, it's what we call a microstate. It means it has a different position, a different speed, a different energy every time you take a different snapshot, aka microstates. So the more microstates it has, the more entropy. Okay, because what's the whole point of ent entropy, ladies and gentlemen? It's about motion. We want movement. So are there some things that you can change to make somebody move more, aka more degrees of freedom, more microstates? Absolutely. We can increase volume. Now, why would increasing volume create more movement? Well, think of it, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about volume of the box, not volume of the sample. So if I went from here to an increase in volume of the container, I had gases that had this much space. They didn't have a lot of freedom, okay? But then I said, hello, big box, big container, and look at all that room. Those gases can spread out, stretch their arms, kick back, and just fly all over the place and move. When you increase the volume, we're talking about increasing the container. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this ain't rocket science. You know when you change that temperature, oh yeah that temperature increases what have you done i have created more energy i have created more collisions i have created more now related now to this topic i have created more movement particle movement what else have you created i have created more degrees of freedom which is like our fancy way of saying moving. I have also, if I started taking pictures, wouldn't I have more pictures of that molecule in like different locations? Absolutely. With the solid, I take a picture. He's just sitting there. He's just vibrating. I take a picture. Is it a different picture? No. Okay. Maybe he's up here. Maybe he's up here. Maybe he's here. Same picture. Okay. Gas here. 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 Crazy. Even a liquid. Woo. Woo. He's blowing. I can still get more pictures compared to a solid, just sitting there. It's bouncing, that's boring. Okay, we want gases, we want chaos. So I can even get more microstates, more snapshots of different movement. And I think you're getting it, ladies and gentlemen, I think you're getting it. And obviously, if I add more moles, more molecules, more moles, I just say, come on in, more particles, come on in. 
and I definitely create more disorder, disorder. So when I add, when I increase moles or molecules, I have created disorder. And if I create disorder, more disorder, more chaos, I have increased my entropy. And that's a good thing. We want disorder. We don't want order. That's boring. Okay. So increase in temperature, increase in uh, molecular um, molecules, moles, and an increase in volume. All of those could definitely get you to have any of these changes increase your possible positions and energy. Okay. You just got to think like a molecule. So when you're explaining, ladies and gentlemen, you know that explaining portion, okay, especially qualitatively without the numbers. Think of like melting ice. If I'm going to melt ice, I'm going to go from a solid to a liquid, okay, and have I created movement? Absolutely, because in the beginning, you first talk about the solid, okay? The solid is very held tightly in a rigid type of what's called crystal lattice. Hey, remember that word back in chapter seven, crystal lattice, okay, lattice energy. And you're like, OMG, I forgot what that was. 33 more days, thank goodness we're gonna be reviewing, okay? So in that solid structure, it's a tightly packed crystal lattice. But then when it starts to melt, those molecules can move. And we have created degrees of freedom. We have increased our particle movement. And now the particles are more dispersed. They have been distributed throughout that container. I have created movement. You have to talk about him, ladies and gentlemen. You saw it in the first video. You better give some love to that word movement. What if I threw like a salt and water? I'm trying to do like a strong electrolyte, AKA ionic compound. And I'm trying to take Mr. Potassium and Mr. Chlorine right there, probably a bigger molecule because chlorine's bigger. And I'm trying to put him in water with Mr. H2O. Now strong electrolytes 100% dissociate. And if they 100% dissociate, the question is, did I create more movement from that solid? Or did I create less movement? And you know, ladies and gentlemen, that solid is in a very highly ordered arrangement. And remember, these things are called crystals, crystal lattices. When that solid dissolves, I have created some ions that can move. And if I created movement, I have created entropy. Just like up here, I created movement, I have created entropy. They are more randomly distributed, but you gotta be careful. The water, the water was out here all over the place, okay? But then Mr. KCL came in, and now I got K, and I got CL, and I got my oxygen part of water that's attracted to that potassium, and I got my hydrogens attracted to at least one of those chlorines. What happens is you actually have disorder and order at the same time. The water molecules actually become a little bit more ordered, okay? Because they were flowing, they were moving, and now you got him attracted to an ion. You've actually created a little bit of order. So some of this must be used to hydrate the ions. So this example involves both ordering and disordering, but the disordering trumps everything, okay? So you probably don't even have to talk about the water being more ordered. It's about all about those ions. I have created movement for the ions because they 100% associate. They are free to move about compared to in a solid form. Uh-uh. So anytime you create movement, solid to liquid, liquid to gas, solid to gas, any of those create disorder. When you go the other way, ladies and gentlemen, you create order. So even if you increase moles in that container, you definitely have created more movement, more freedom, more particle distribution. Real quick little shout out to the last law of thermodynamics, the third law. It says if you have a perfect crystal, which means obviously we're talking about a solid, okay, probably an ionic compound, at zero Kelvin, Okay, which is called absolute zero. Okay, which we're talking about negative 20, uh, 273 degrees Celsius. 
there is no translation no vibration no movement whatsoever the bonds aren't even moving that's how frozen it is okay so we call this a perfect state of order there's nothing moving so the third law of thermodynamics the entropy of a pure solid crystal at zero kelvin is zero the entropy is exactly zero at that temperature for a pure solid crystal so as you start to heat it you took the solid crystal and now you started to light a fire under him and now you have created some movement and if you created some movement trying to get this guy into a liquid phase whatever that temperature may have been i can now create some disorder think like a molecule ladies and gentlemen and honestly it will save your life in this topic think about how mr water moves think about diatomics moving think about any molecules how does it move